Hey everyone, this is Spawn from Coding Galore and this video will cover the do's and don'ts of React components. Let's get into it. Okay, so first of all, let's say you have a reusable component and there is a policy in your company or team that you have to use this reusable component wherever this functionality is required. Now, this results in some problems. Let's say you have to add some custom functionality in a button. Like in this case, you have to show a tooltip in some scenario in the app. Now what would happen is obviously you wouldn't want to just add this functionality in the component. Basically you want this functionality only in your component. You will add an optional prop like this show tooltip. You will also add the necessary logic for that tooltip in this component and it would be conditional. So it would only be available if the show tooltip prop is true. Now let's say someone else wants to add a tooltip which shows after delay in this button component. But because obviously this person has to reuse this component and this person doesn't want that this particular functionality gets added everywhere, he or she would add another optional prop and so on. And because of that, this component would become polluted and cluttered with very different conditional logic and many different optional props. And there is a chance that if someone comes and adds his or own functionality, he or she also breaks some previous functionality because this component has become very complicated. So in a case like this, where you have a reusable component and you are adding so many optional props in it that if this is true, it should do that. If this is true, it should do that. It is recommended you make two or three components and not just reuse one component based on the scenarios you have so that your components are not cluttered with weird conditional code and the components are simple now there is another example of reusable component let's say you have a button component and you want that when you double click on this button component then it makes a request to localhost 7000 so this is a component where you have to use the button you have added a boolean make request and double click prop and you said that once this prop is true it should basically call this double click handler when we double click on the button now the problem with this is this is not really a reusable prop so if i want to do something else on double click in some other part of the app this would not work because this prop clearly states that if this is true then it should make a request so if let's say in some other part of the app i want to hide a modal on double click if i want to follow the same code structure i will have to add another boolean prop and then I will have to do, you know, a switch case of sort where if this is true, do that. If this is true, do that. And basically this doesn't fall into the paradigm of this component. This is a button component and button component is supposed to be a simple component with some CSS and some stuff. The logic which has been added into the component, like making requests, etc., is not really part of this component. And also because the initial prop I added in this component wasn't reusable, people are coming in and adding multiple props and that is not really a good practice. A better approach would be to make a reusable prop. So in this case, I have made an on double click prop and this can be any function and I passed the on double click prop here. Now in the component one scenario, I wanted to make a request to localhost 7000 on double click. So I've added that. And then in component two scenario, I wanted to do something else, maybe hide a modal by updating the state. So, you know, I can do that in this component. And basically this is an example of reusable prop. Now I have another example here. You have got here a card component and all of the markup for this card component is present in this one file. Now, this is obviously not that much of a large component, just 106 lines. But when I would add the necessary logic for these components, like, you know, the mutations for liking, commenting, share, the queries for bringing the posts, etc. It would become, you know, a 400 500 line component. Now, obviously, large components are difficult to maintain. They are difficult to scale. So what we can do is we can basically split this component into components, which makes sense. So in this case, if I just look at this component, some things appear as separate components. So I can extract this particular thing, the card footer into its own component and it can have all the mutations sector related to these buttons and then maybe i can have this menu as a separate component and i can have the mutations for added delete hide etc in that component and this would basically simplify the component now we have basically got the same components but we have splitted the footer and menu into its own components and now you can see that the lines have been reduced from 100 something to 59 i have added this social card footer component here i've added the menu component here and these are its own component now it would basically be easier to scale these components and maintain these components. Now another don't is that if you have a component, you shouldn't have things inside the components which are not directly dependent on the component. So in this case, I have a menu options array. Now this array is a constant. It isn't directly dependent on the component state or prop. 
it won't change in any case even if the component is rendering infinite rendering this particular array would not change so what we can do is we can extract this and also its corresponding enum to a separate file then we can import it from there now i have simplified the component a lot better i've extracted the menu options into its own file and also its corresponding enum and now not only have i simplified it now i also won't need to memoize this many options because it was present inside the component a component should only contain stuff that would either change using state or props or maybe is dependent on something which is to be used inside this particular functional component you know maybe it is dependent on some hooks or something like that only that particular portion should stay in the component otherwise you can extract it into its own constant file like i have done here these were some of the do's and don'ts which I think should be kept in mind while making a Jack component. What do you think about this video? Do let me know down in the comments below. As always, like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.